Hi and welcome to This Is Your Life. We're here at the Albert Park Raceway in Melbourne where our guest of honour thinks he is coming to shoot a commercial. But we have set the whole thing up just for our surprise. His 30 year career is full of car racing records spearheaded by these actual cars. He has become a folk hero to millions of Australians. Here he comes. He's on his way here now, so when he starts taping the phony commercial, we'll surprise him. In the second part, which will be on a different camera, which will be um, just, can you see the Arnott sign? Yes, okay. idea of changes. But through here, there's one thing that's always stayed the same. Oh, just a bit of this. For the three decades that I've been racing, believe me, I've seen plenty of changes. But through here, one thing has always stayed the same. Hi, Peter Brock. This is your life. <laughs> very, very naughty. <laughs> uh, I, like I hate to tell you, but uh, this has all been set up. Uh, there is no commercial for mobile. Um, the models are here, the mechanics are all being set up, the outside broadcast trucks, all so we can see. It's just a hoax, isn't it? Bye. Would you mind taking a seat? No problems. Good, good, thank you. <laughs> Peter Jeffrey Brock, you were born on the 26th of February 1945, the second of four sons to Jeff and Ruth from Hurstbridge outside Melbourne. Now, your father has a car parts business and he's your biggest influence. But also, as you grow up, the family loves going to Collingwood football matches. In fact, you dream of one day playing centre half forward for your beloved Magpies. You also spend a lot of time at your grandfather's property where you learn to drive tractors, billy carts, bikes, scooters, anything with wheels. That's it. And already as a youngster, you're a daredevil. And to tell us more about that are your three brothers, Phil, Lewis and Neil. <laughs> Thank Phil, tell us, he was, pretty, he was pretty mean in the billy cart too, wasn't he? Well, he was a bit out of control, but see, his, his comp competitive urge didn't leave him either. Now, that's when it was born, and if the billy cart wasn't quite right, I was the one that had to test it down this hill next to our place. So, no consequent, the <laughs> broken face and all that sort of stuff, but... Uh, we, I had to get it right so that he could go out and win. Now, Lewis, tell us about Peter. On the way into football, we'd go into Victoria Park. Sitting in the back of the car, he could pick the model of every car. Name every Which one. Which is amazing. Name every car, the year it was built and so on. So definitely there was, um, you know, cars in the blood then. And Neil, you're the eldest brother. What was he like in the early days? Well, uh, we shared the one bedroom, the four of us, for some years. And then in those, Dad extended the house. And uh, we had a bedroom which we shared together. Well, it was then that uh, car magazines, car parts, and even engine blocks appeared on that uh, bedroom floor. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. <laughs> yes, Peter, at school, you're an attentive but average student. As soon as the bell rings, there's plenty of other much more interesting things to do fishing, camping and working on the property. You then convert an old Austin A7 by cutting off the body with an axe. There it is. Yes. And turning it into a paddock basher. Yeah. Your sights are now well and truly set on racing. Brocky nice. used to also race his mum's new car down the street. Yes, but the only trouble was his mother didn't know about it. It's two close mates of yours from those days. 
whom you haven't seen each for at least 20 years, Titch Worthington and Butch McCutcheon. Wow, 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 Now, Butch, you haven't seen Butch, you haven't seen Peter for thirty years, isn't it? Thirty years, yeah. yeah. What was he like back then? Well, he was a bit of a larrikin. He, I think, he invented the Hurstbridge circuit, only at night time when the local cop had gone to sleep. But uh, <laughs> a bit of nocturnal activity in those days, boys, wasn't it? Especially with Mum's car. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Titch, what were your experiences? Um, <clears throat> I can remember turning Peter white. Well, actually, it wasn't me. It was my mother. Peter and I went for a driving lesson to teach her how to drive, and she uh, ran off the road and. Peter didn't want to get back in her car ever again. Ever? <laughs> Not surprised. And that's saying something for a man who's pretty fearless, right? But I've never, that's always been my aversion in life, is being a passenger to someone who's got these aspirations. I'm not a good passenger. There's one other friend uh, that uh, wouldn't be the same tonight without, and that's John Lovegrove, who has multiple cirrhosis. John? Oh, dear oh, mate. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. You didn't know if you were going to turn up or not. <laughs> Oh, you couldn't keep me away. I'm the one with the wheels, mate. Exactly. <laughs> and this guy used to be the one who used to... Because I was so small for my age. He used to lift me up and hurl me around and do all sorts of things. So, uh, yeah, we, we had a, yeah. quite a combination there for a number of years. Yeah, he was a lunatic on a bike, lunatic in a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 would, I would imagine his family is quite happy that he's at long last going to get a proper job and stop <laughs> swanning around in a fast car. Peter, it's 1965 and you're 20. You've been working part-time with your dad as a car parts salesman. The Vietnam War rages on and you're called up for national service. You attend Kapuka near Wagga for two years in the Army's Medical Corps. That didn't stop him from racing though. He turned to ambulances. Your fellow medico, Dave Turnbull. Dave Turnbull. <laughs> Things we did. <laughs> so, so eventually he turned to ambulances to race. It was just a bloke with a broken leg that was sort of reclined in the back of the ambulance. Emergency, and he managed of to, course. Managed course. to tip out, you know. Out, 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 of, well out of the ambulance altogether? No, 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 just out under the, the floor of the ambulance. Just under the floor. Not but, very impressed? Well, he wasn't too happy, but um, <laughs> we thought we had to get in there quite quickly, Dave, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> and, Dave, thanks oh, very much for joining thanks, us. Thanks, Dave. Well Cheers, mate. <laughs> What a fabulous career you've had over the past 30 years, enviable by any standards. I knew when we first met in 1969 at Bathurst, you weren't going to make life easy for me. And your superb nine victories at Mount Panorama certainly proved that. I don't think that record will be beaten by anybody in our lifetime. Have a great night, mate. Peter, you've had a wonderful career. We're all proud of you. Have a great night. Well, Brocky, congratulations. Congratulations on your retirement. Congratulations on being on this program. And all I can tell you is, when you retire, that's when you have to start working for a living. So get ready for it. In 1967, you're 22 and return from national service with that racing bug. You buy another old Austin, an A30 this time, and spend every waking hour converting it with a Holden engine in the family chook shed. In your racing debut at Winton, you run out of petrol, right? But in your third race at Hume Weir, you win. And then there is no stopping you. You race nearly every weekend, competing in everything from hill climbs to sprint races. And by the end of 1969, you've had 102 race wins in your self-built self-financed Austin. Then you get a phone call from one of the most influential men in car racing. It took a while to convince him it was actually me. Holden's race team leader, Harry Firth. Harry, you obviously saw the potential in Peter. Yes, I thought I'd better give him some bit of overseas experience. <laughs> I'll take him to Macau, which is just near Hong Kong. And uh, we took a Tirana and he went, did very well in the race for his first effort. He got second outright. But we did a big promotion on the uh, Levi Pan Am 
uh, deal. And I thought, I'll just have a bit of a game with him here and give him a bit more worldly experience. I wrote his resume up under his photo in Chinese. And all the little Chinese girls, when he came in, uh, uh, chasing him all around the room. And he said, hey, what's with all these girls? I said, Peter, over here, you see in the middle of that resume, it says you're a great lover. <laughs> <laughs> You've always been my mate, Harry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Harry, thanks for your time. <laughs> <laughs> At 24, in your Bathurst race debut, you come a respectable third. You then win a string of rallycross championships, just like this one at Calder Park 27 years ago. Australian series leader Peter Brock is favoured to consolidate his position as national rallycross champion. It's accepted that this is the toughest test for a motor car yet devised. Brock's Toronto wins three heats and now takes out the final. You win Bathurst in 1972 when you're 27. Throughout the next 25 years, you hold more pole positions and win more races than any other driver. You win nine Bathurst and nine Sandowns. You also win the 1979 Repco Round Australia race, one of your most satisfying victories. It's a career which is bound to remain in the record books. Well, two rivals paying you tribute tonight. Join us now, Dick Johnson and Glenn Seaton. Oh, goodness me. Dickie <laughs> 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 Boy. Dick, if we can start with you, you two guys have had a few battles oh, over the years. Oh, you shouldn't be asking Dick these <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's one day that I'll always remember was when we were sitting on the grid at Sandown and Brocky sort of, we were on the front row of the grid and Brocky says to me, basically indicates to me to have a look at this this lady flag marshal that was on the post beside the starting line, which we did, who sort of had this pair of overalls on that was sort of un unbuttoned down to the waist and it was... I was shocked. Was, and he was shocked. <laughs> and, so, and, and we missed the start. Everyone blew us away. <laughs> Looking at the ladies' battles. Just... <laughs> did either of you win that race? Well, I, one of us did, but I can't remember. All we can remember is the first bit. You know? <laughs> Some things take precedence. <laughs> sure, I can understand that. <laughs> Glenn, what do you remember about Peter? Yeah, uh, Brocky was always uh, my idol, and uh, I suppose still today he still is. And um, I hope you feel very proud of what you've achieved because I think you've done a fantastic job for motorsport. That's great. Thanks, Glenn. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Peter, you always say never shrug off a fan. You always sign autographs, no matter how many, true? Yeah. Well, one of your biggest fans, who wasn't going to be shrugged off tonight, is radio guru Doug Mulray. Yeah. He joins us live from Sydney. You there, Dougie? Hey, Dougie! Hi, mate. I had to stay up here. I had to do it from the comfort and privacy of my studio at 2SM because to stand next to you is a disaster for me. You're too tall, you're too pretty, and you've got far too much hair. <laughs> Thanks, Tuggy. Mate, uh, I'm just thrilled and delighted they're doing this for you. I love motorsport, and motorsport doesn't really get enough uh, recognition. You've been a fantastic ambassador. I think you've done for the sport at home what uh, Jack Brabham probably, Sir Jack Brabham probably has done for it overseas. And uh, congratulations, mate. It's nice to share in your uh, evening. I, I must say, as a kid, even though I now look older than you, as a kid, you were an idol of mine. Years and years of self abuse, you see, I'm recreationally polypharmic. <laughs> You took the A30 and put the, the 186 in it. I, I straight away, because everything you did I had to do, got a Morris Minor and put an MGA motor in it. That's all I could afford. Um, and I was, I was quite pleased with the car. It was fairly quick, but unfortunately I wasn't. That's why I never went on to become a racing champion, because fundamentally, Pete, I couldn't drive a greasy stick up a dog's fundamental orifice with a frying pan. <laughs> You can. You're a champion. You're a legend. You're a genius. Never mind Zeus. You're the king of the mountain and we all love you, mate. On behalf of all motorsport enthusiasts and most of the commentators, congratulations and more strength to your arm. Thanks, mate. Well done. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Off the racetrack, you party hard and certainly have your fair share of late nights. You marry twice and both end in divorce. Then in 1976, you form your cherished partnership with Beverly. You both see life the same way, and she offers a more tranquil existence away from the track. Well, here's Beverly and your three children, James, Alexandra and Robert, and some noisy <laughs> new members of the family. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Very sneaky. 
James. Sorry, mate. Hello, Dale. Hi, 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 Beverly, tell us, is life as fast off the track with Peter? I don't think there's ever a quiet moment. Lots of challenges, never dull. And, and James, I believe you're into cars? I've built a car, a replica of Dad's A30, his first car that he built himself. And uh, yeah. It's a damn sight better than how his dad built it. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's beautiful, it really is. It's, it's very nearly finished as we speak. Yeah. Really yeah. close. Yeah. And Dad's helped you work on it? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, sure I went down there a few times with a few suggestions and then Jamie uh, quietly pointed out to me that perhaps there was another way of approaching it. And after a little bit of conflict early on, I thought, sat back and thought, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm going to let him go. So he's, he's built this car up. Uh, it's primarily the way he's done it, and it's, it's a credit to him. That's great. Yeah. And Alexandra, you're, um, we're told that you're very much like your dad. Is that true? Mm, so people say. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. I guess we are. Um, we have our, our disagreements every now and then, and, but we pretty much get along pretty well, which is good. Yeah. And you're into computers, I believe. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> How does Dad feel about that? Um, He's not that happy about it, really. <laughs> <laughs> so we heard. And um, he bought me a paddock basher to um, try and get me outdoors more often. A bribe? Yeah. <laughs> did it work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a while. Did. For a while. <laughs> All right, kids, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> For sentimental reasons, you then buy back the Brock family property, which enables your mum and dad to see out their final days with you. Sadly, they both passed away. They went to all your races, didn't they? Yes, absolutely. My greatest supporters, yeah. Well, despite your busy schedule, you always find time for charity work. And three people who've gone round the track with you join us tonight. Ian Baker-Finch, Jackie Love and football hero Peter Dacos. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Ian, if we can start with you, what's he like as a golfer? Well, uh, <laughs> Pete's always been an idol of mine, but uh, when I had the opportunity to play with him at Ivanhoe in a pro-am about ten years ago, <laughs> I, I seized the opportunity and, and looked forward to it. Took him out on the first tee there and he said, now, what do we do here? And I said, this is a little dog leg left, you take a three wood, kind of keep it down the right side, little wedge onto the green. And he said, no, no, how do you hold the bloody club? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to show him how to hold the club, but uh, true. we had a great day oh, and, was, and we signed fun. thousands of autographs and yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, Jackie, you've had your moments with Peter. Yes, uh, around Australia on the Red X Bash and Peter had just done this amazing race of 16 kilometres over very rocky, muddy, sandy terrain. And then, um, not to, you know, be <laughs> unbeaten, was um, Alan Moffat throwing raw eggs from a helicopter at the car while I was driving. <laughs> right. <laughs> just trying to stay on the road. <laughs> Peter, you and Peter have uh, been mates for a while, haven't you? Yeah. Guiding me, uh, he was fantastic, and uh, I'm just wrapped to be here. That's right. Thanks, Thanks very much, Peter. Thanks, Simon. Thank you. Hey, Brocky. Uh, I'm really sorry I can't be there tonight, mate. I'm, I'm also sorry to hear that you're retiring, but uh, you really deserve it. You've been one of Australia's great, true great sportsmen. Thanks, mate. Have a great night. Peter, I hope you're enjoying this experience of This Is Your Life. You certainly had a full one, and Peter Perfect's performed over the years remarkably well. One of the examples, certainly, to Australian racing drivers and a whole lot more around the world. Have a very good time and I wish you well for the future. Hi Peter, congratulations. At least over here I'm freed from the spray of champagne of your success. <laughs> but apart from the sheer professionalism that you've displayed, you've also shown a real sense of adventure in all that you've done. And I wish you and Bev every success in the endless adventure that awaits you. <laughs> Then only two months ago, you announced that Bathurst this October will be your last race. And it'll be an emotional one because you'll leave behind some fiercely proud fans. Please don't go, Mr Brock. It's your youngest fan, eight-year-old Courtney Barnett. Oh, goodness me. Oh, 
What do you got there, Courtney? Um, this. Oh, it's my photo of Brocky. <laughs> I love you, Brocky. Don't go. Oh, thank you, Brocky. <laughs> 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 Probably around that way. And Courtney, right. Courtney, you've always wanted to do something with Mr. Brock, haven't you? What was yes. that? Um, has it go in his car? With Mr. Brock? Yes. Can that be arranged? We have to do it, don't we? <laughs> I mean, it just has to happen. <laughs> You'll let me retire then? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good to deal. Thanks, Thank Courtney. Thank you. Bye bye. Peter, there are many people who've been a part of your success over the years. However, there is one man who's always steered you in the right direction. Brocky, there's only one guy in the whole world that I'd fly this far to honour. All the way from Michigan, the he United States, your old team leader, John Rock. He couldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> You couldn't have done this. <laughs> hey, John, how are you? Thank you for coming well, on I this way. Well, i got to tell you. <coughs> Wouldn't have missed it, this, huh? This crowd uh, doesn't know what a smooth talker this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget the time that uh, I was informed that we had a Ford master cylinder on the Holden race car. And that's bad news. So I talked to Peter about that, and that's when I learned about that old Australian phrase, she'll be right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the only GM executive that has a Ford Master Cylinder as a trophy signed by Peter Brock in my den. <laughs> well, this guy's sold more Holdens than anybody uh, dead or alive before or since. <laughs> Thanks, John. John, thank you very much for joining us. Good. Thanks for coming Thanks, all Rock. this way. <laughs> Well, Peter, you're about to drop the flag on your astounding racing career. But we know there are still many other races out there for you. And we wish you all the best in going for a 10th Bathurst victory. But whatever happens, your name will be forever synonymous with car racing in Australia. Peter Brock, this is your life. our guests choose to stay at the Rockman's Regency Hotel. Right. Now, are we ready to go? OK, let's do it, OK? Hey, we went fast too, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. We did go fast, I think. See you later. It's a little hard. 